Hi, welcome to Type 2, where we discuss everything about Type 2 diabetes in a way that everyone can understand. I'm Dr. Vladimir Carvalho, and today we're going to discuss the first few things that you need to know or you need to do when you are diagnosed with Type 2 diabetes. Now, for those of you following this channel, you know that when you eat, your blood sugar goes up. But you also know that this blood sugar will get into your pancreas and make the beta cells of the pancreas release insulin. And this insulin will make sure that the glucose will get into different cells in your body so that they can be used for energy or they can be stored as glycogen and fat. Okay, I know some of you might say it's not only when you eat, your liver can also make glucose, right? So let me just put it here. Okay, your liver can also make some glucose. But remember that your liver cannot make glucose from the air you breathe. Your liver makes glucose from the food that you ate before and was stored. So at the end of the day, I'll keep saying when you eat. And let's say that for you, this normal process is not working and the sugar is staying in your blood. Now you've gone to the hospital and they said that you have type 2 diabetes. Now most people don't know what to think or what to do when they hear this. You know, they start thinking about everyone they knew with diabetes that, you know, got blind or got their legs cut or died of heart attack or, you know, things like that. But worrying and crying is not part of my list. Now let me tell you what should be your mindset. Number one, you need to be grateful that you have one of the most manageable diseases that you can have. Now, if you don't believe me, you ask anyone with type 1 diabetes or anyone fighting different types of cancers and, you know, things like that, you will immediately be thankful because it's very easy to manage type 2 diabetes. You have so many options that, you know, a lot of people don't know what to do. <laughs> Number two, you need to know where you stand. Because as I told you in my previous video, when you have type 2 diabetes, you have two main problems. One is insulin resistance and impaired beta cell function. Okay, I've just changed the pancreas. So know that if you have type 2 diabetes, you have insulin resistance where the cells are not using insulin properly and you have impaired beta cell function. Now, some people will tell you that type 2 diabetes is only about insulin resistance, but that's not true. Because when you have insulin resistance, your pancreas will always compensate for it. If you have a lot of insulin resistance, your pancreas will be releasing a lot of insulin because the entering of glucose into your beta cells is dependent on the concentration of glucose. High glucose always means more insulin coming until they can deal with the glucose. So if one day you have so much insulin resistance, that the glucose is not going anywhere is because your pancreas cannot compensate anymore. But at the time of diagnosis, most people will still have sufficient beta cell function. You know, even if half of your beta cells are gone, you can still live well if you take care of your life. Now, this is why I said this is a blessing, because if you ask someone with type 1 diabetes, how many beta cells do they still have left? zero none nada you understand so that's why these people with type 1 diabetes they have to take insulin every day to try to do what their beta cells were supposed to do that is really sad but if you have type 2 diabetes you still have some of them but how do you know if you have if you still have enough beta cell function or if you have a lot of insulin resistance this in any big hospital you can check it it's easy to check but in general, if you are overweight, okay, and you have not lost a lot of weight recently, that means that your pancreas is still fine. Because you cannot gain or maintain body weight without enough insulin. It's impossible. So that's why in many studies, you know, studies in rich countries where people are all... That's why a lot of studies have shown that people with type 2 diabetes who are overweight, when they lose weight, they can reverse their diabetes. Because if you are overweight, 
that means your pancreas is still doing fine. Otherwise, you would lose that weight quickly. Now, to be sure, you need to go to the hospital and check. But in general, if you are obese, that's a good place to start your type 2 journey because you still have enough beta cell function. But if you are those type 2 who are skinny, who have lost a lot of weight recently, I worry about your pancreas. But again, you need to check that. Now, number three, you need to know your options. As I told you, people with type 2 diabetes have so many options that sometimes they get confused. Now, if you have type 2 diabetes and you are overweight, and I just told you that your pancreas might be fine. In that case, if you change your diet, it's enough for a lot of people to go back to normal. And when you add some exercise to it, then you're good. Your life can go back to normal. Now, let's say that you don't want to do that or it's not enough, especially for some people that you know, are skinny with type 2 diabetes. Let's say that that's not enough. You still have a lot of medications. You have medications that will stop this food from coming here, will reduce the amount of food that is coming here. You have medications that will stop your liver from making too much glucose, from putting too much glucose into your blood. You will have medications that will help glucose, that's not help, that will help more glucose get out of the blood. You have medications that will force your beta cells to work harder and make more insulin. But I don't really like those because your beta cells are already working hard. So these are not my favorite medications. But anyways, you still have them. Now, you also have medications that will take this glucose out to the toilet in your urine. We have different things that will deal with this glucose. And then, if nothing works, at the end, you still have insulin. So do you know how many options you, you have before you get to where people with type 1 diabetes are? That's why I said you're blessed. I think next week, if I have time, I'll talk about one of these medications. If I have time. Okay, let's go to number four. Set your goals as early as possible. Because your beta cells are going down. I see some people, when they're diagnosed, maybe they still have 50% of beta cells. They don't do anything. They just wait when they have 20%. They start taking care of themselves. But that's too late. And you can work closely with your doctor and decide what to do. Now, for most people with type 2 diabetes, for most people with any diabetes, the goal is to keep your blood sugar in a certain level to prevent your complications later. Because diabetes cannot do anything to you without complications. Diabetes is just like, you know, that kid in high school that threatens everyone because his brother got big muscles, you know. Diabetes cannot kill you, but all its friends, all the complications that it brings, can kill you. We're talking about destroying your blood vessels, you know, your eyes, your nerves, your kidneys, your, you know, destroying everything in your body. And those will kill you. So that's why preventing complications is the most important thing of any diabetes guideline. And different guidelines will give you different A1C targets to, to achieve that goal. But I'll not get into that now because I already made a video on A1C and you know everything you need to know about A1C. So maybe I'll just put a video here and you can check it. Number five, you need to keep learning about type 2 diabetes. Now, I know that you need to work closely with your doctor. Because when we make videos on YouTube, it doesn't matter which channel. I am a doctor, but when we make videos on YouTube, we do not know you well. So everything that we make here is general, is for education. So we will not be able to give you specifics, right? So that's why you need to always work closely with your doctor. But you still need to learn some things on your own. When you watch this channel, you can learn some, you know, pathophysiology of type 2 diabetes and how things work the way they work and you know what your body's doing things like that and if you watch channels like uh, beat diabetes you will learn a lot of practical tips on how to uh, test different foods and how to 
see how they affect your body and you can have a lot of motivation from that channel you know things like that you can also read books read guidelines uh, some hospitals they have some groups groups of people with diabetes that can help each other you know things like that because your doctor will never have enough time to explain to you everything about diabetes it's not possible there are more than 460 million people living with diabetes. Most of them are type 2, more than 90%. But know that it's impossible for your doctor to sit with you and explain to you everything about type 2 diabetes. So you need to learn on your own. Even if you go to the hospital every week or every month, it's not enough. And most people will go every three months or every six months. And even if you have your doctor's phone number, Unless you live in the same house, there's no way you can have all the information that you need. So asking for that is asking too much. You need to learn things on your own. But you also need to be careful because there's a lot of misinformation on the internet. But there's also good quality information. So you need to know how to balance things. You know, Before you try something new, you talk to your doctor. But make sure that you learn and keep learning. Don't just wait for the visits you have once a week or once a month or once every six months or something like that. Don't, don't do that. That's not enough. Okay, I think these five things are the ones that come first to my mind. And if I think about something else, maybe I'll make another video. But So, have a blessed week. Bye.